This week, as we continue our series of understanding the Bible, we come to the account of the flood. This story is told in Genesis from chapter 6 to chapter 9. I'd recommend you reading the full account for yourselves, but I'll summarise the story for you now. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of, his, of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will des destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. There's a man living at this time called Noah, and the Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth. Then God tells Noah to make a big boat called an ark, and he gives him specific instructions on how, how he wants it to be made, such as the dimensions and what materials to use. God then tells Noah that Noah, his wife, his three th sons and their three wives will go into the ark, along with a pair of every kind of unclean animal, male and female, and seven pairs of every clean animal. Then, after many years of construction, the ark is finally finished and the rain starts. The flood continues for 40 days and 40 nights until every mountain in the world has been covered with water. The flood wipes out everyone except Noah and his family. Eventually, the water starts to go down and after about a year on the ark, Noah, his family and all the animals can go back onto dry land. Once there, God makes a covenant with Noah and he says that he promises to never flood the whole world again. And he puts the rainbow in the sky as a sign of that promise. So whenever you see a rainbow, you can be reminded of God's promise. And we know that God always keeps his promises. So now that we know the story, what can we learn from it? To many of you, you might find this story unfair. But if you do, that probably means you have, the wrong under, have a wrong understanding of God. Most people in the world who believe in a God think of him as some sort of distant being one who will respect your choices and then let you into heaven if you've been generally a nice person. But that's far from the biblical view of God. Just remember that six chapters ago, at the start of our Bibles, that God made humanity. We are created by God and for God. People decided they didn't want to follow God and continued with their lives with no regard for him. It was not unjust or unfair for God to destroy the world. It was his world. It would have also been perfectly just for God to have destroyed everyone, including Noah and his family, but he chose not to. The Bible says that God is patient and he gives people a chance to repent of their ways. There are many parallels that we can draw between the story of the flood and the story of the death of Jesus. The ark is really a picture of Jesus. Only those in the ark were safe from the flood of God's wrath. And, and similarly, only those who are in Jesus a phrase which means putting our faith and trust in him, are saved from the wrath of God. The ark bore the flood judgment, but greater than that judgment, when Jesus died on the cross, he bore our sin judgment. A wooden ark delivered Noah from physical death, and a, a wooden cross delivers us from spiritual death. Whereas the ark only saved a few, the cross will save a multitude of people. In the New Testament, Jesus says, just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. This is an attack on marriage, because as we know, marriage is something that God himself instituted. Rather, it's simply saying that the people were carrying on their lives, paying no attention to God or, pre or the preaching of Noah. The Bible says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. So, just as Jesus, then later Christians, proclaimed the, the good news of the gospel, so did, did, did Noah also preach the good news of the gospel and the way to be saved from the coming wrath. But no one listened. In the ark, there was only one door, only one way to get into the ark and away from the coming wrath. Anyone that wanted to get in had to come in the same way. So it is with God. God has given us one way to be saved, and that is through his son, Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
people today have their own ideas of how to be saved, and I'm sure they did in Noah's day too. Maybe some people believed that a flood was coming, but wanted to try their own way. They didn't want to come the way that God had given. As I said earlier, if God had wanted to, he could have destroyed Noah and his family and just started over, but he didn't. God also could have decided not to offer his son to come to be our saviour, but he did. God, in his mercy, has offered us a way of salvation. As we've said many times before, God cannot leave sin unpunished. But instead of that punishment falling on you, if you are in Christ, he has taken that punishment for you. He died on the cross to save sinners. He died in my place to be my substitute, and he can be your substitute too. Put your faith in Jesus. Repent of your ways and come the way that God has given. Just as in the days of Noah, there will come a day when it's too late, when the door is shut. We urge you to enter the door before it's too late. Thank you.